Okay, everyone, welcome to Notopia um, uh, for, for the next of the exciting lectures related to virtual reality issues. This one particularly about the perception of um, space within virtual worlds. Um, uh, I thought I would um, uh, do today's lecture, um, a beautiful, um, uh, beautiful sunset. Um, uh, nice, um, yeah, nice um, experience here in here in Notopia. So, um, uh, space perception. Okay, so there are three main topics um, uh, that are going to be important when we think about how an individual will perceive um, a virtual environment as 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 a space in which they can interact with. Um, uh, the first one is about where, um, the perspective from from your from an individual um, viewpoint, sort of the egocentric perspective. Um, but there's the exocentric in terms of the third person view and, and thinking about objects related relevant to each other, um, independent of, of of the individual. And these all feed into to what are known as reference frames, which are important for for, for designers to, to 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 consider their um, virtual environments. There's also segment segmentation of space. So here we're thinking about the, the as we move further and further away from from the individual. What does that mean in terms of your relationship with the space? You get different types of relationships. For, for things that are close versus things that are far. And um, and your virtual environment needs to reflect that too. Um, and the third thing is obviously very important, influenced very much by the type of technology that you're working with, but essentially a, a, a perception of space requires um, a perception of depth. And, we, um, and there are various um, important um, cues um, that that need to be incorporated within the virtual world in, in order to provide that perspective of depth. Um, some of those relate to characteristics of the eye. Some of it relate to characteristics of the um, of, of objects related to to each other. But they they all need to be considered when it comes to providing sort of um, the best possible perception of of depth. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, the first thing is all about um, egocentric and exocentric judgments. Okay, so egocentric, um, obviously related to the ego, related to 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 to, to the individual. Um, so yeah, relevant relevant relative to our own bodies. So um, in a virtual world, we need to have some sense of what is what is up and what is down. Okay, and we can do that through having sky and having some sense of, of ground, of floor, um, uh, to provide, um, uh, to, to sort of work with how we think of, of up and down. Um, but we may need to think of what is what is to the left and what is to the right, and, the, and having hands within the virtual world will, will help with that considerably. Um, but also in terms of what is in, in front of us and, and what is behind. And, and things like field, field of view is very important here. In, in, in the real world, um, our eyes afford a certain field of view, roughly about 180 degrees in the horizontal plane, um, and about, um, I think it's about 120 degrees or so in the, in the vertical plane. And your, um, your technology needs to sort of work towards those, those sorts of values to provide the, the best sense of, um, uh, of, of, of space for, for an individual. Um, now, in terms of exocentric perception, there we're thinking about the location of objects relative to each other or to the to the to the wider to the wider world. And there's a number of different aspects associated with that. One is some sense of distances um, uh, that that, that, um, uh, that whether or not objects are close to one another or objects are far from each other, and how we understand perspective there is important. Um, the, the real world obviously has a sense of, of, of gravity, that um, we pick things up, we drop them, they fall downwards. Um, now that doesn't 
Um, uh, that that's an uh, important consideration in terms of people perceiving a space in which they um, uh, can 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 move around and they can can throw things and they can um, uh, um, move things about in certain ways. But obviously, that doesn't have to um, be um, be the case um, in um, uh, in a um, in, with ma what I've termed it before magical interactions. So I just um, I just brought a pen down. It fell, but it didn't fall um, uh, truly in relation to gravity. It fell at an angle to come to me. And obviously, if I put it here, it it doesn't drop. Okay, but that's to allow me to be able to to more easily um, work with it. I might have to keep sort of fumbling around trying to pick it up off the up off the ground. Allows me to be able to do what I want to do with it, so it's it's a sort of yeah, it's a magical interaction, but is a, a useful interaction in, in this world. But we wouldn't necessarily want that to happen with with everything. Um, let's get over there so I can point as well with it. Um, the last one is is particularly important if we're developing a virtual world that needs to to help people or maybe to train people related to to then a real world experience. And that is geographic direction, a sense of of where I might be in relation to the to the world, to the outside world. So we, you know, in the we would get that through thinking about north, south, east, west, about a sort of an overall um, mental map, or what's commonly referred to as a cognitive map of of the environment. In Notopia, I have no sense of of a north or a south in in any shape or form. But if I was in a virtual world that, that was training me for um, uh, maybe for military operations or some sort of aspect of my job, um, and, I, and it was important for me to develop navigation knowledge in that experience, then you need to be consistent with um, uh, what is north and what is south, um, uh, for instance, so these sort of um, geographic directions. So, okay, so this feeds on nicely to thinking about reference frames. So, um, so we have a variety of different re reference, fra reference frames in virtual reality. There's the virtual world, there's the real world, and there's body reference frames. So the virtual world reference frame fo follows on nicely from thinking about geographic direction. Um, uh, so, so essentially, there's a there's there's a consistent frame that you can use to to, to aid in navigation. And the top picture um, sort of demonstrates this, where we might have um, this could be in a um, um, virtual reality for, for 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 an estate agent to provide a potential homeowner with a perspective of a of a, of a house. Um, and then you've got the sort of egocentric side of things, sort of looking around at the, the, the lovely living room and the garden. But then you've got on here, you've got a map, which will be um, a virtual world reference frame. Doesn't matter which way I'm facing, doesn't matter where I am, I can, um, it stays consistent as, as a sort of a, a north up map type might do in the real world. And that can help us to, to develop um, knowledge of this. Um, of this spatial knowledge of this place that we're within. Okay. Now, the real world fra reference frame is essentially it makes sense. Is, is 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 what's happening in the real world. Okay, and you may use that in your virtual environment. Or you may you certainly need to know about it. So you might need to know about the objects that are there in the real world from a health and safety perspective, so that you don't. You know, you don't walk into them. You don't sort of. Um, uh, if I wander around here, if I walk too far, I'm going to walk into um, into a door, or I'm going to walk into a table. So, so the real world reference frame is important to know about from a health and safety perspective, but it may be also important to know about from a from a mixed reality perspective because we may exploit that if we have good calibration between our virtual world and our real world. Then we can exploit those real-world objects, the real-world reference frame, in order to provide a more um, a, a more immersive experience with potential for much higher presence. So the example 
here um, uh, is where you've got um, in the, the real world reference frame has these sort of cubes um, that, um, that are made soft just in case people you know, run straight into them. But these are then linked in with virtual world objects, which might be a, like a box here or something that, that people can, um, that, that can touch. So as you move around this whole, ver this whole um, real world space, then um, uh, you can reach out, you can um, touch things, um, and it's real things that you're touching, but what you see are, are, are virtual objects that are, are calibrated with them. So you can have very high levels um, of presence when you can then have you know, physical things that you can, then you can go and touch. In, in, in Notopia at the moment, if I go up to a wall and put my hands against it, I'm not going to touch anything. If I have someone else in here who's um, um, also got hands like me and I, I high five them, then we're not, we're not going to, I'm not going to feel someone else's hands there. Okay. Um, that, that's going to require a much better um, real world reference frame. Okay, the last one here is all the different types of body reference frames. So obviously this is going to be much more egocentric um, in the perspective. Um, and it's, it will influence the designers where they might put, um, put uh, menus, for instance, in, a, in an interface. So it could be torso referenced. So as I move my torso from one side to another, that might then bring up certain, um, certain menus that follow me around. So I don't want too much to move around in relation to my torso. I don't want the, this whole world to move around in relation to my torso. Um, I need that to stay fixed. But I might want a, a menu that I'm going to interact with to, to, to be influenced by, um, uh, by, by which way my torso is facing. Um, hand references will also be very important. So you can see that in the picture down the bottom where the, the hand goes out into a certain, um, certain action, it brings up, a, brings up a menu. And then you can um, uh, pick up on, on, you know, yeah, on, you can then press, press buttons on that in order to, um, to, to change certain things. Or it could be that, you, um, that it, it, it tells you what your controllers can do. So, so you look down to, where, to, 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 your, to your hands, and it tells you what, what buttons are going to operate what particular things on your controller for this, you know, this particular um, uh, virtual world. So that's sort of tied in with a hand reference point. Head reference will be will be also very important. So which way my head's facing? So I can in not notopia with with my Oculus, I can um, um, if I move my head up, then I will get the the menu is. Um, so when you see me looking up like this, it's generally because I'm looking towards a particular menu. Um, and if I go over here and then I put my head up again, my menu is moved to a different place. So it's oriented to to, to my head, essentially. Um, I think it's probably a combination of my head and my torso, actually. And then if you, uh, if you have um, uh, a much more sophisticated headset with eye tracking built in, then, um, uh, then you could be working to eye reference points. So I look towards a certain thing um, for an extended period and it brings up a menu associated with that. So this is, you know, the, the, the reference frame is associated um, with different parts of the, of the body. Okay, we can think of the segmentation of the, the virtual space because, as I mentioned before, it influences our relationship with the virtual world. Um, and, um, you know, the obvious one of the, um, uh, here is, is personal space. So this is space that I can reach out and touch. It's sort of at hands, sort of um, uh, um, hand length, or sort of arm length, sorry, away from, from where I am. Okay, I can, um, I can reach out, I can touch. Um, and that's, um, you know, that's where I can have direct, direct manipulation over objects okay, in, in that space. So, the, so my hands are very powerful within um, uh, personal, personal space. But there are issues also about um, proximity to other avatars and whether or not that's, a, um, um, uh, that, that's an infringement of my personal space when people come in particularly closer. You know, I've noticed in Notopia when, when, um, uh, when, people, um, uh, when people's avatars get, um, uh, get closer, they might go through 
um, uh, then there's a there's a ten, tendency for people to apologise because they feel like they've infringed someone's um, personal personal space um, within the world. So it's quite a powerful um, aspect of um, of what we um, how we think about space. Now, action space um, in a sort of two to twenty meter type zone is where we can influence the world through um, uh, through 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 actions. So we can um, uh, and uh, we can quickly uh, move. So I can move over here. And I can um, uh, so I can make quick movements in order to 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 um, to, um, to go to 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 to, to pick particular places. Um, uh, I can um, uh, um, uh, yeah. I don't need to to, to teleport um, uh, or you know travel long distances. Um, quickly, I can go there. But also, I could. Um, I could um, interact with that space maybe by um, throwing something, or um, you know, I can you know I can point at things at a distance with the with the laser in this sort of this sort of area. So I have it's sort of it's still um, essentially it's public space, but it's um, it's a space that I can still interact with, okay, in various ways. And the last one is. Um, is vista space. So this is the relatively unchanging um, views um, that um, that my eyes might rest on in order to, to as, as far images. Um, they don't tend to, as I move around, they 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 stay fixed. They're unchanging, and they're important for that that um, sense of of of, of distance and um, and. Yeah, of, of of particularly as a, a sort of resting point in the in the driving simulator, the, the the vista space is really important from for 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 people's eyes because they um, most commonly in driving people's eyes sort of rest on the on the horizon and then they come come forward in order to focus on cars and pedestrians and things like that. But there's a general resting point towards the, the horizon, and you need to have that. Um, and that particularly helps with um, issues to do with sickness. Now, here in in Notopia, um, uh, my vista space is sort of you know is it here behind me. You can look out, um, uh, and um, yeah, and I've got the I've got the the sky, I've got the, the the water, I've got the the sunset. These are all part of the vista space, and these are all helping um, uh, with my you know my overall um, uh, sense of a, of a. Of a, of a virtual world that I am part of. Okay, so um, the last couple of slides are really about. I'm just going to come down a bit. Place for you. Okay, I'm sure that's helped. Anyway, um, uh, it's all about depth perception. So um, uh, where. Um, yeah, how I, how I, what are all the different things that need to happen for me to perceive depth in a virtual world in the way that I might do in the real world? So, um, so the most obvious ones are the things for you when you're experiencing um, Notopia on your desktop computer or on your tablets um, are all these um, pictorial depth cues, and there are many of them to be exploited. So these are 2D cues that then get perceived as being 3D. And they're really important in the um, in desktop based um, VR. So I will um I'll go through those on the on the last slide. Now um but there are other ones as well that might be associated with motion or associated with the wearing of a um, of a headset that provides um, certain things as well. Um so um first ones are associated with um motion depth cues so um so cues that are related to um yeah um, how how you perceive um depth in relation to, to to objects that are moving so motion parallax is essentially when you have things that are close to you um uh, that are moving at a particular speed there's a sense of um, um uh, they, of blurriness in those um objects as they go um, uh, as they as they move past you, um, and as, the closer they are, the, the 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 faster they seem to be going. Even if they may be the same speed as something that's further away. 
Okay, so this is particularly important in, for example, the in the driving simulator when we we're thinking of um, objects um, going, you know, sort of coming sort of past you, so traffic um, going past you versus um, objects that might be uh, much further away, but they could be still going exactly the same speed. So this um, um, uh, blurriness is um, uh, is associated with motion parallax. Now, a kinetic depth effect is a, is a more specific thing associated with 3D objects. So we, 3D objects, um, uh, when they're perceived on the, um, they, they're perceived by the brain um, based on the information on the, on the retina, they, um, if they, when they, when they're moving, then we, um, uh, we can perceive them as a, as a 3D, 3D object, even if the, um, um, they're not. They're, we've we're missing quite a few different cues. So just based on its overall shape. So you have, um, and it'll be a combination of the, of the of its shape, but also shadows which come together in order to 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 to, to make you understand that that is a three D object and that it is clearly it is moving. Now, um, obviously, we have um, we have um, two eyes. Um, uh, and they 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 see the world in slightly different ways, and that information is then um, fed back to the brain. Those those two separate images are combined um, uh, in the visual cortex, and that um, uh, those those binocular depth cues provides us with um, stereopsis, which um, allows um, is a very powerful um, depth cue for people, and obviously in a, a headset. Um, uh, um, exploits that um, ability for, um, uh, for for humans, and um, as mentioned in the in the sickness lecture, we have these um, ocular motor um, depth cues, um, uh, which have some some particular significance associated with virtual reality induced sickness. So there's um, there's vergence, um, just as a reminder, there's vergence about the eyeballs turning in towards an object particularly relevant for an object that is close and then you've got accommodation in terms of the lens of the eye changing its shape in order to, to bring information um, at a certain distance into focus on the back, um, back of the eye on the retina. Okay. Now vergence and accommodation in the real world are in sync with one another. In the, in the virtual world they could, um, and they're, they're quite commonly out of sync with one another. So the eyeballs may turn in, but accommodation is fixed because the information in the virtual world is all on the same plane. And so for me with an Oculus Quest 2, um, it's about one and a half, two meters away. Okay, but everything in terms of accommodation um, is on that focal plane. But um, if I have something that's close to me, my eyeballs, so my hands, and I put my hands right up to my headset, um, then um, then my eyeballs are, um, are, are turning in to see my hands in focus. Now, certain um, experiences that you might provide for people, um, that you may well get that conflict. I had it recently um, uh, playing a game in virtual environment where I needed to I needed to go up a ladder, okay, and I needed to be doing that for quite a long time. That meant I had to look at the ladder that was very close to my eyes, um, and quite quickly that felt quite uncomfortable. Because it's being my, my accommodation is to a couple of meters away, um, uh, but vergence is coming right in and it's having to stay in for an extended period. And that, to, together with head movements and everything, definitely made me feel, feel pretty, um, uh, um, it was pretty unsettling. So, um, so, so, so these depth cues are important, um, uh, but they're not necessarily all being exploited um, uh, well in the sort of current um, uh, headset designs that are commonly around. And my last slide is just um, related to all those sort of two two D cues that may be represent that may be perceived as three D by an individual, and and particularly for you, for you with the um, um, uh, when, if, when you're using um, a, a desktop computer, a laptop, or a tablet for, for experiencing Notopia, then you've got all these different things here. So you might have the fact that the aerial perspective, though things on the far distance, are sort of a blurry. Um, uh, have sort of got a sort of a haze around them. Um, 
you have textual gradients that sort of that, that come in. You've got relative, so two objects um, uh, that sort of say we we you know we know are the same about going to be about the same size. We have like um, expectancies, what's known as top down processing. Um, uh, then yeah, then the relative size of them is going to be important. The relative height is going to influence our perspective of depth as well. There's a linear perspective as things um, uh, parallel lines move closer to one another. You've got occlusion issues or what's, what's sometimes known as interposition, and you've got yeah lighting and shading. And all these different cues come together to give us that sense of of depth associated with a with a virtual image. Okay, right, that's me done for today. I um, uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Um, uh, the next lecture will be all about, all about avatars, about the representation, our embodiment within virtual worlds. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one about um, space perception, and, um, and I'll see you again soon um, here in Autopia. Okay, take care, everyone. See you then. Bye.